Hello everyone, welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. We are just beginning the fourth case, which by all appearances seems to be Miles Edgeworth shooting and killing a man. And curiously enough, this time around, we know who the murderer is and we don't know who the victim is. Well, hopefully Miles Edge isn't the murderer been very cagey about things, so I guess we have nothing else to do than to press onward. We just had a conversation with Papaya as well, so let's talk to her, see what, we'll see what else we can do. Oh yeah, we did learn that we need to go talk to Mr. Grossberg, because he knew the victim. What should we do? The police have pretty much made up their minds that Mr. Edgeworth did it, and Mr. Edgeworth won't tell us anything. I guess we could go look for clues down by the lake? Alright. Well, Penny for your thoughts? Thoughts. Thoughts. Yeah, why won't Mr. Edgeworth tell us anything? And... and... And why did you refuse to ask for our help? What a jerk! Ah, come on. Papaya, he has his reasons, I'm sure. Okay. We should really, really, really chat with Mr. Grossberg. Ah, I, I see he didn't get his painting back. That's a shame. Ahem. Ah, that old familiar clearing of the throat. Oh, you're Maya's something, are you not? I was her understudy, yes. Phoenix Wright. Aha, and you, you're Mia's... Something too, are you not? Oh, come on, dude. Our little sister, yes. You've grown. You've come to look a lot like your sister, you know? It takes me back. Ah, the days of my youth. The scent of fresh lemon. You see. No, I don't see, sir. Um, Mr. Grossberg, sir? Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, I beg your pardon. Of course you came here to discuss something. What is it then? Something the matter? Yeah, could you tell us a... Oh. Huh. There was a murder last night. A murder? You haven't heard? I heard... just got up, you see. Oh. <laughs> well, I, I think that there's no doubt he's already strayed away from the prospects of defending Mr. Edgeworth. Well, Miles Edgeworth shot someone with a pistol. Edgeworth, what? Who, who did he shoot? Well, the identity of the victim is still unknown. This is, this is, this is terrible news indeed. I guess he hadn't heard anything. Oh, yeah, maybe he, maybe he was telling the truth. Mr. Grossberg, whatever happened to that painting? Oh, yes. I do not think it shall ever be coming back home to this office. Can't exactly claim it as stolen. I suppose it's by just desserts. Old, bitter desserts. Yeah, that's fair. Uh... Can you tell us anything about this stuff? You've really grown up in the past few years, my dear. How proud Mia would be if she could see you now. And she saw me the other month, that's fine. She said she was more worried about me than anything. Ah, uh, just go on and take the comp compliment, will ya? So, this camera on the lake takes a photo whenever it hears an explosion sound. That's what she said. And it just happened to be set up on the beach, pointing out on the lake? Yes, she said it was to photograph shooting stars. It's bogus, they don't make noise. Hmm, shooting stars, explosions, what's the connection? Yeah, exactly. I'd be suspicious of this witness of yours. Yeah, no kidding. Hmm, strange. I feel as though I've seen this man somewhere before. Ah! Do you remember? He was a lawyer! Here in my office! 
That's Hammond. Robert Hammond. Oh. Okay, well, scratch my theory of being Edgeworth's father. Or Mia's father, for that matter. Robert Hammond. Huh. Mr. Hammond. Robert Hammond. I can't even detect a pun in that. Robert Hammond? Bob Hammond? Bobby Hammond? I don't know. And you say this is the man Miles Edgeworth shot? Well, at least we learned his ID. So this is the moment the crime took place, eh? Yes. Can't we say for sure that's Edgeworth? Not sure whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Not sure at all. Er, my apologies. I'm not sure I can help you with that. Uh -huh. Okay, now we can talk more about Robert Hammond. Who is this Hammond guy, anyway? Mr. Hammond. He was the defense attorney in that case. That case? <laughs> oh, bingo! He was the attorney that worked with Misty Fay, the DL6 incident, I remember. Why does that sound so familiar? Come on, Phoenix, it's been weeks since I saw that. I remember. Perhaps you remember. I'm sure someone mentioned it during the trial for Mia's murder. That was the incident where the police were so at a loss that they used a spirit medium. Wait, you don't mean... Was that medium my mother? Yes, my dear. The spirit medium, Misty Fay, your mother, contacted the spirit of the victim. But the case was a loss. No conviction was made. Oh! No conviction at all. Whoa. The DL6 incident, yes. Happened 15 years ago. <gasps> 15 years! That's the amount of time that Edgeworth said he waited to take his... The amount of time that Edgeworth had been suffering. Why would Robert Hammond... Losing the case... Mess with Edgeworth? Unless it's just the case that his father had a different surname. Maybe it's really... It's really Edgeworth's father all along? I don't know. Either way, it looks like Edgeworth was personally spurned by the outcome of this case. Never caught the criminal, right? Correct. Misty Fay used her powers to talk to the spirit of the late victim. Her testimony led to charges being laid against one man. But Mr. Hammond won the case and the suspect was declared innocent. Oh. Police blamed my mother, calling her a fraud. You were the one who helped her out then, right, Mr. Grossberg? Er, yes. Yes, quite. Thank you. No, please, don't mention it. DL6. Never thought I'd hear that name again. But wait. Does that case have anything to do with Mr. Edgeworth? Yeah, please, tell me. Oh, he knows, good. It has everything to do with Mr. Edgeworth, my dear. The victim was Gregory Edgeworth! <gasps> oh, shit! Ha <laughs> Wow. Okay, I understand. Edgeworth shot Mr. Hammond after the 15 years because Hammond was the one who cleared the name of 
Gregory Edgeworth's murderer. The murderer walked free. Oh my God. Oh my God, no wonder Edgeworth freaking hates defense attorneys. That's why he wanted to become a prosecutor because he hates defense attorneys so much because in his eyes, regardless of what hap- what really happened or not, in Edgeworth's eyes, a defense attorney was responsible for letting the man who killed his father go free. Oh my God. <laughs> What? His father? If you want to know more, you should ask him yourself. Mm. Yeah, if we bring up this, he's sure to have a reaction. Show him this. I'm sure he'll talk to you. That that would be Misty. Wait. This is a photograph of my mother. Well, guys, at the start of this case, I before it even began, I asked uh, I asked for more of this. I asked for more info on the DL6 incident. And boy howdy did we get it. Holy crap. Honestly, the way this is going, maybe this is the final case of the game. Who freaking knows? My god. Misty Fay, mother of Mia and Maya Fay. Show this photograph to Miles Edgeworth. I have something to say to you then. Wow. Oh, we're here. Oh yeah, I guess uh, Maya never saw this, huh? Uh, well, he gave it to someone. I bet he gave it some romantic interest. Love Bloom's eternal Nick. Ah, oh, that's a good callback. I still regret not accusing Grossberg and White of being lovers. That would have been hilarious. Uh, yeah. I'm glad I looked at that. That's a, that's supposed to be bear. Oh yeah. I always thought it was like some tusked wildebeest or something, but no, that's like a bear with a salmon in its mouth. Okay. <laughs> okay, I think we're done here. Let's go have a chat with Mr. Edgeworth. What's this? I was hoping you'd got my message the first time. Edgeworth, what about your defense? It's no concern of yours. Guess he hasn't found anyone yet. Now yeah, tell us more. Can I ask you about the murder? Right, I'll ask you again, just leave me alone. Please try to understand. I'm not doing this to prove I'm tough or because I look down on you. I just don't want you anywhere near this case, understand? Yeah, this is so deeply personal to him that... As I said before, I think, it, I think it's the case now that just Edgeworth doesn't want his friend to go down with the ship. Why did you go to Gort Lake? I have no intention of telling you. Nor, apparently, would you tell Detective Gumshoe. Detective Gumshoe was really worried about you. Okay. Time to bring out the big guns. Edgeworth? It's only been a matter of hours since you last visited. But you've made incredible progress in your investigation. I'll admit it, I'm impressed, right? You are always single-minded in your work, though. Once you start on something, you always see it through, don't you? 
Not the DL6 incident. Right, DL6. I didn't want you to find out about it. That is why I refused your offer to defend me. I'm sorry if it sounded like I thought you weren't up to the job. I just wanted to keep you away from DL6. So, do you still think it would have been better for me to stay away? I don't know. But, I see no point in hiding anything from you now. Very well. Ask whatever you like, and I will answer to the best of my abilities. Yeah, I guess there's no point in hiding anything now, huh? Okay. Why'd you do it, man? Sorry, I can't think of anything I want to say about that. Oh. The DL6 incident was when my father died. Ooh. Right before my eyes. <gasps> he was a witness to it. But even still, the defense proved the murderer innocent. He was shot and killed, and I saw it all. My memories from that time are foggy. I suppose it's a self-defense mechanism. In any case, a suspect was arrested. A man. It's pretty clear that he was the only one who could have killed my father. The spirit medium that used to talk to my late father said the same thing. It was an attorney by the name of Robert Hammond that cleared the suspect's name. And Hammond... Is the victim in the Gord Lake murder? Correct. Um, that spirit medium, that was my mom. What? You mean your... It's strange. I thought that terrible incident was about to end, and now this. About to end? The DL6 incident happened 15 years ago. So if Edrith is 24 now... He would have been... Four? I want to say? Oh god, I hope it was four. I'm not good at math on my, in my head, I'm sorry. Uh, Fifteen years ago, on December 28th. Oh. That's... That's, a, that's a, certainly a date. The statute of limitations on the case runs out in three days. <gasps> oh, shit. We can still... We could still prove it. The case is, can st be reopened. What? Um, Nick, what does that mean? When a case's statute of limitations runs out, legally, the case never happened. Three days from now, DL6 will be closed forever. What happened to the suspect? The one who got off innocent? I don't know. He disappeared from public view. Nobody knows where to. If he's still alive, he'd be about 50 years old now. I guess I can understand why he'd go into hiding. It'd be hard to live a normal life after being a murder suspect in such a big case. Um, so, was your father a lawyer? He was. Gregory Edgeworth. He was quite famous at the time, apparently. So you were sort of trying to follow in his footsteps. I'd rather not talk about it. Wow. Damn, Edgeworth. Your attorney's badge? Uh, what's that? Oh. <laughs> Who would have thought there'd be a photo? Edgeworth, did you shoot him? What do you think, right? I don't think you're the kind to point a gun at anyone, no. So you didn't shoot him? No, I didn't. It wasn't me. I want to believe. 
right? It pains me to ask you this now. Oh, let me hear it, dude. I know, you want us to defend you, yeah! Yes, will you? Of course we will. Ah, uh, who could have guessed this day would come? Not me. This is my chance to finally pay you back. Pay him back? Pay me back? Oh, he even he's confused. For what? I don't remember ever doing anything for you. Never mind. Guess you don't really need to know. Huh. My letter of request. Please give it to Detective Gumshoe. Well, I guess we should... What's that? Earthquake? What? Question. Why? What? Earthquake? Why? Why? Why would there be an earthquake in the story? What? What does that add? Um. Where's Edgeworth? Oh. Did he leave? There. He's on the floor in a ball shivering. I guess he doesn't do so well with earthquakes. Uh... Maybe we can say in court that he has a terrible fear of the ground shaking beneath him and therefore he could never have gotten in a boat willingly because of the rocking of the waves? I don't know. I've heard of running, but curling up in a ball? Well, I guess we're done. Mr. Edgeworth doesn't seem like he's going to stand up anytime soon. Let's go, Nick. Uh, right. We have to give Edgeworth's letter request to Detective Gumshoe. That was... interesting? Uh, how's the guard ho hanging up after the quick? Oh, nothing new. Okay, let's go. What's going on here? Eek. What? What's wrong, Detective? This wild lady comes in here just a while ago. Oh, a lot of heart. Says she came to talk to um she came to talk to y'all after hearing what Mr. Wright had to say. What's this all about, pal? A lot of heart. Why are you going around finding more witnesses? You want to give Mr. Edgeworth the death sentence, pal? Oh. Ah, uh, right, I guess it would have been bad to make another witness. Um, whoops. N no, not at all. Just, I mean, she did see something. There's nothing I can do about that. You can't go around covering up evidence. Er, uh, you trying to say something about the way I do my job? No, sir. Very curious. So, what did Miss Hart say? She says she saw Mr. Edgeworth fire the pistol. Question, how did... How does she know who Mr. Edgeworth is? I can't recall ever telling her about Edgeworth. Just that there was a murder here. What? She even had a photograph to prove it. Right, I saw it too. I really can't tell from the photo who it is shooting. So she says she's going to enlarge the photo? But that won't add more detail, that'll just make it blurrier. And we'll drop the quality of might, but should let us see who's who? No, that's that's not how that works. She can do that? Uh-huh. Great, just great. Oh, she'll testify tomorrow. What about the other witness, though? What happened to the other witness? Yeah, thanks, Papaya. Well, apparently there was a cancellation. What? You can't, can't just... What? Something 
stinks here. I I'm afraid tomorrow is going to be life or death for per poor Mr. Edgeworth. We got a witness who says she saw the very moment of the murder. We got a photo taken when the shot rang out. Yeah. What did Mia used to say? If he's innocent, there's got to be something I've overlooked. Sounds like Mr. Edgeworth is going to ask the state to assign a public defender. I was just asked to file the paperwork. But you still got time, pal. Go talk to him again for me, please. You have to convince him. You have to make him let you defend him, please. I know you're the only one who can do it, pal. You're the only one who can save Mr. Edgeworth. Well, about that, I'm about to make you very happy. Look what I've got. Hey, you did it, pal. Glad I waited till the last minute to file those papers. I'll rip them up and start new ones for you. Thanks, detective. Well, see you in court tomorrow, then. Good luck, pal. Hey. You guys feel that earthquake a little while back? I was worried. Worried? We're fine. I've lived out here my whole life. I'm pretty used to them by now. Oh, I wasn't worried about you two. I was worried about Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, tell me about his phobia. Oh, right. He did seem to overreact a little now that you mention it. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. It was a pretty big quake. I'm going to go check on him. You two, you two go eat and get your rest for tomorrow's trial. Later. Okay, I'm, I'm dead certain now that... He has a phobia of the ground shaking and being unsteady beneath him. Interesting. Maybe because there was a quake at the time of his father's death? Back when he was a little kid? And that's what he associates the quake with? Maybe it was a... I didn't really get a good look at the at the black and white scene of the father's death, of Gregory Edgeworth's death, but... It kinda sorta looked like he might have been in front of an ATM. Maybe... <laughs> this is gonna sound weird, but... Maybe they were held at gunpoint in a robbery, and the quake started, and the unsteadiness and shaking made the, the burglar burglar's... Uh, his, his finger accidentally pull the trigger. And it was an accidental shooting. Uh, I'm just theorizing, though. I wonder what it is with Mr. Edgeworth and the earthquake. I wonder. He was never that scared of them when he was in school. Oh. Huh. Then again, I only really got to know him in fourth grade. Oh, yeah, that would be... That would definitely be for after... Wait. Wait, I'm confused about the time. Oh, no. Oh, we transferred to another school after that. Oh. So that's why they hadn't seen each other in so long. I wonder what happened to Edgeworth. To be continued. Okay. I'll do a save, yeah. Turnabout good turnabout goodbyes. Um Goodness me, that is That is quite the uh, uh Oh boy, here we go. Karma? Uh Damn, dude, don't talk about, like, what you're just desserts. Come on, we've got to fight. That's right. Manfred von Karma. Oh. Oh, he's the best prosecutor there is? Oh. Oh. Okay, so I was right about there being a new prosecutor. Um, Manfred von Karma. Yeah, that, that name alone makes him sound like he's some serious shit. Oh, boy. Hasn't lost a case in his 40-year career. What? 
That's absurd. Come on. Jesus. He is a god of prosecution, right? A god. Not a single case. He'll do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. Uh, that sounds a bit familiar, Edgeworth. Yeah, sounds like someone else I know, Edgeworth. <laughs> you don't understand. I mean he'll really do anything. Manfred von Karma is a man to be feared. It's quite a claim coming from someone who forges evidence. He taught me what it really means to prosecute. Oh. So... Miles might have been his apprentice? What? What? Just picture a prosecutor as vicious as me, multiplied by a factor of ten. Oh, they're really hyping this guy up. Ugh. So... So was he your teacher then, Mr. Edgeworth? Something like that. And now he's trying to get you found guilty? What a creep! Oh, wait. Maybe he's planning on losing on purpose to help you out. Huh. We can only hope and dream. Not a chance. He hasn't lost once in 40 years. 40 years. He's as ruthless as me times 20. Okay, those numbers keep getting bigger, man. That's pretty ruthless. Like I said, he's a god among prosecutors. I guess that's something like Mia was to me. Speaking of Mia... Um, Papaya. Uh-huh. You could really be using Mia's help right now, don't you think? Oh. I can't. Sorry, I tried. I really tried, but I couldn't reach. Couldn't reach? I think it was because I haven't been training. What exactly have you been, been doing for the last few months? Just slouching around on the couch watching Pink Princess? My powers are weak again. Oh man, what bad timing. I'm really sorry. I'll try my best. Hope so. What are you two whispering about? Uh oh, it's nothing. Well, it's time. Let's head in. Oh boy. 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number three. Whoa. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. I never thought I would be reading those words. The defense is ready, Your Honor. All right, Manfred von Karma. What do you like? Well. I can see where Edgeworth got his fashion sense. Holy crap. Um. Yeah, wow. Um, Mr. Von Karma, is the prosecution ready? Fool. You seriously think that I would stand here were I not completely prepared? Wow, this guy is all business. Jeez. Right, my apologies. <laughs> He's even got the judge scared. Very well, your opening statement, please. Decisive evidence. Decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? Uh, er, nothing, of course. That should be fine. Wow, he is... Wow. The prosecution may call its first witness. What's with this guy? Is he royalty or something? How am I supposed to fight against this? I call the detective in charge of this case, Detective, Detective, Detective. Okay, gumshoes first. Let's see how this goes. Describe the incident, now. At least he's a man of few words, but... Keeps clenching at his at his sleeve. That doesn't that doesn't exactly seem like a nervous tick. It's more like a frustration tick. Like we're all wasting his time. Yes, sir. The 
Detective Gumshoe looks nervous. Or, please take a look at the map. Ah, okay. Huh. Okay, the murder happened late Christmas Eve around midnight. There was one boat in the very middle of the lake. That isn't even close to being the very middle. There were two men on the boat. Now, there happened to be a woman camping here on the edge of the lake. At 12.10 a.m., she heard two... I'm sorry, two pistol shots? What? What? Two? What? Well, at least I can contest that. I can object with the, the claim of one bullet shot to the heart, but... What? Then the boat started to move. It went towards the boat rental shop. Hmm. Okay. Testify to the court about the arrest. Now! But wait, Mr. Von Karma? Yes? Actually, I'm the one that's supposed to be handling those proceedings. Wrong. There is only one thing you need to do here. You will slam down your gavel and say the word guilty. That is your role. Y yes, of course, you're quite right. No! Come on, judge! No, he's not! <laughs> ah, okay. Okay. So, we can't cross-examine the initial claim that there were two gunshots, but... We can cross-examine the arrest. A man called into the station around 30 minutes after midnight. Oh, so the other witness is a man. And he called it in about 15 minutes after the murder happened at 12.15? That is such a... That was 15 minutes for Miles to get the hell out of there. How did the man recognize who Miles was? What the hell? We headed to the scene of the crime as fast as we could. Oh, Edgeworth stayed at the scene. Now, I didn't suspect him of anything at all, but the next morning a body was found in the lake. Wait, if you didn't suspect anything about him, what was the call to go to the lake in the first place for? What did the witness who called it in say what happened? You were just asked to go to the lake and that's it? What happened? So we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm, I see. Very well. Begin your cross-examination, attorney. Now. What's the rush, man? Okay, I need to press everything here. You received a call from a man? Er, yep. Yeah. But you said there was a woman camping there. She was the one who heard the two gunshots, right? Oh! What is that deep freaking voice? It's like, objection. Uh... That woman and the man who called in the report are two different people, obviously. Different people? There were two witnesses. Erk. Their testimonies were quite similar, however. Today I've summoned the woman who was camping. The prosecutor isn't the one who gets to summon people, that's the judge, or the law as a whole. And earlier Detective Gumshoe said that there was a cancellation. 
I feel like Gvan Karma pulled some strings to ensure that the man witness didn't show. There's something about the ma male witness that Von Karma w doesn't like. He does not want that witness to take the stage. Very interesting. What happened next, detective? We headed to the scene of the crime as fast as we could. Yeah, how long between the report receiving and the arrival? About three minutes. Wow, that is fast. That's pretty fast. Our motto for the month is get there quick. Detective, you will refrain from casually revealing department secrets. Wow. This guy. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. I look forward to your next year's salary review. Oh my god. <laughs> the weight he's throwing around so casually is equivalent to the mass of the planet Earth. <laughs> so much to look forward to these days. This is no time for dejective daydreaming. Continue. Dejected daydreaming, rather. That's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. What was Mr. Edgeworth like when you saw him then? Well, from what I saw, he looked pretty relaxed. Not like a murderer at all, really. Detective, the court requires the facts, not your opinion. How many years have you been on the force? Facts only, detective. Hard, cold, objective facts. I I yes sir. Man, he's got a share of objections. Now, I didn't suspect him of anything at all. But why? Why wouldn't you suspect him? You got a call. Why didn't you think he was suspicious? You should know. We have a deep, trusting relationship with the prosecutors. Detective, the court isn't interested in your amusings. Deep, trusting poppycock. Hold on, I really, I really gotta deliver this. Poppycock. There we go. I've never heard so many flippant comments from an active detective on the force. Um, detective Gumshoe doesn't look so good. Continue, now. But the next morning, the body was found in the lake. Did you find any clues on the body? A single bullet was recovered from the body. It was shot through the heart, fatally. Judge, here's the bullet. It didn't strike bone, so its shape is well preserved. So you're saying it went through the rib cage and into the heart? Very well, the court accepts this bullet into evidence. Huh. A .22 caliber pistol. So, we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. But well, why is that? Well, we found the murder weapon in the boat. Oh. The murder weapon? A pistol. Detective Gumshoe, that is a vital piece of information. Please revise your testimony. Right, so sorry, Your Honor. Yeah, the murder weapon we found in the boat was decisive evidence. Tell me about that pistol. What about that pistol made it decisive evidence? Either the caliber size or the fingerprints on it. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Ah! He has the same evil laugh as Edgeworth. Oh. Is that supposed to be a laugh? There are fingerprints on the pistol found on the boat. They were clear prints from Mr. Edgeworth's right hand. Oh. Okay, maybe the photograph will show that Edgeworth, like, held it in his left? Maybe? I don't know. W what? 
Order, order. So Mr. Edgeworth's fingerprints were found on the murder weapon. Yes, Your Honor. Judge, this is the weapon in question. A accepted into evidence. Wait, fired three times? What? No! One bullet inside the cadaver, two shots heard by Lotta Hart, and the pistol has evidence of being fired three times. What? What? Members of the court, we now have the pistol used in the murder and the bullet found in the body. Detective. Y yes, sir? Was the bullet found in the body fired from this pistol? Yes, the ballistic markings on the bullet match the pistol. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hey, Nick, what does he mean, ballistic markings? Shocking. To imagine someone here does not know something as basic as ballistic markings. Nick, he's glaring at me. Tsk. Very well, I'll explain. Actually, judge, you do it. Oh, come on, dude! <laughs> He's bossing the judge around. Or, um, ahem. Ballistic markings are like the fingerprints of a gun. The barrel leaves distinctive marks on each bullet it fires. You can examine these ballistic fingerprints to see which gun fired the shot. It's quite accurate. Indeed. This leads to one inevitable conclusion. The bullet found in the victim's heart was without a doubt fired from this pistol. Yeah, I don't think I can contest that. This pistol, which, as you may recall, was covered with the defendant's own fingerprints. The order, order. This is bad. This makes it look like Edgeworth did it. Well, Judge, I'd say it's almost decisive, yes. Honestly, I could declare a verdict at this point. However... You wish to hear the witness speak, no doubt. Very well. I am somewhat fatigued, and so I will take a brief break. Wow, he's not even gonna be here for this? He's so confident he's won, what an asshole! I will call my witness after the recess. No, no, not even that. He's demanding a recess. Not even demanding it, he's just... Going ahead with it like it's... like it's... Ugh, come on! Which will last ten minutes. Judge! Uh, yes? What are you doing? A ten minute recess. Now! <laughs> oh my god! But, but wait, I... Just bang your flimsy gavel and get on with it, man. Y yes! Wow! <laughs> um... Who's running this court, anyway? <sighs> ah. Jesus. Edgeworth, what's going on here? Your fingerprints were on the murder weapon? Uh, um... And that foggy photo makes one thing clear. The only one who could have shot that man was the person in the photo. True. Was that you in the boat? Yes, it was me. What? I don't know what to do. What? But you must believe me, I didn't shoot him. Then who did? I don't know. Maybe my theory about a sniper on the bank was correct. I don't know. Were you right there? I heard a gunshot from very close by. Well, it could have been anywhere on the shores of the lake because sound travels so well over water. Then the other man fell from the boat. I can't say why, but... I thought at the time that he had shot himself. Well, <laughs> weird. 
You, you, you mean it was a suicide? That's the only explanation I can come up with. Huh, am I con going to convince anyone of that? Say, Papaya? Huh, Wh what? Any progress with Mia? Oh, sorry, it's no good. Ugh, I know. No good for anything, am I, Nick? I can't call my sister, I might as well not be here, right? No, I need you here. No, of course not, I need you here. I can see you're always trying to help out. And if you don't actually help, it's a thought that counts, right? It's okay, Nick, you don't have to make me feel better. I don't know anything about trials or events. Once more, I'm a spirit medium who can't even contact spirits. Aw, oh, everyone has their off days. I mean, I've just been getting lucky lately. But you never know when my luck is going to run out. Really? But, whoa, whoa, right. Don't jinx this case any more than it already is. It's bad for my heart. Oh, oh, s sorry, whoops. Uh, cripes almighty. Court is now, is back in session. Ah. Okay, I think, I, I know we're kind of running close to the time I usually stop. I think we're about 40 minutes in. This might be a short video, but I need to call it here because there's simply no telling how long this will be. Especially with the cross-examination of Lada Hart and all the shenanigans I'm sure Von Karma will get up to. Um, yeah, there is a lot that doesn't add up, but I can't see any way it connects. The game's going to have to give me something here, a bridge I can cross that will let me connect the logic. Good lord, what even happened here? Well, all I know is that Manfred von Karma, it's a very, very interesting and fun antagonist prosecutor. Jesus. Man. I don't freaking know anymore, dude. All I know for sure is that I think something stinks. I think Mr. Von Karma is playing at something. I can tell he didn't want that male witness who made the call to come testify. If I can play that angle, if I can delay this case an extra day, I can see about interviewing him and forcing him to come testify. Goodness me. Well, I guess that's all for now. This is a very, very interesting case. I am sucked in, man. I love this. Well, as always, I've been Zephyr the Jester. I thank you for watching. And hopefully, I will catch you next time. So, until then, take care.